Hey folks, I'm Kurt Fleener, and today I'm going to show you one way of creating a simple animated lead-in or a bumper for your videos using the timeline functions found in Photoshop CS6. Bumpers are placed at the beginning and the end of a video for displaying titles and credits. Not only do they add a little punch to our creations, they give them a more professional look and feel. They can also be used as the still image to represent the video on sites like YouTube. The basic process for creating an animated bumper is really very simple, so let's get started. We're going to create this one using only five layers. One is our background layer, one will be for the gradient, two will be for text, and one will be for a lens flare effect. Let's go through the steps to make this one. First, make sure your background color is set to black. Then let's create a new document. I'm going to create mine at 1600 by 900 using the background color of black. We'll reduce the size a bit. First thing we need to do is unlock the background layer. Now we're going to unlock the background layer because locked layers do not appear in the timeline when we convert to video later. Next, let's copy that layer using Command-J on a Mac, Control-J on Windows. We're going to make that our gradient layer. So let's go ahead and create our gradient. Let's pick a background color. I'm going to use a blue. That looks good. Choose your gradient tool. Make sure you have radial gradient selected in the toolbar. Put your cursor over the middle of the screen and drag out toward the side. It's going to create a nice gradient. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to create a guide across the middle of the frame to give me a reference for my text. Now let's create our text. Grab your text tool. I'm going to use Trajan Pro Bold 60 points. And let's change the color to 50% gray. Click on the frame and add some text. Now before we commit that, let's bring it down and line it up with our guide. Okay, commit. I'm going to add some effects real quick. Do a bevel and emboss. Leave it at the default. Let's give it some inner shadow to add some depth. I'm going to change the contour to half round. There we go. Now let's create our second layer of text. And we're going to drag that right on top of the first layer of text. And we'll go over that a little bit later when we convert to video. I'm going to add the same effects. Okay, now let's create our lens flare layer. Click new layer and rename that real quick. Now, the lens flare effect will not work on a transparent background, so we need to fill it with 50% gray. So go to Edit, Fill, 50% gray. To get the lens flare, go to Filter, Render, Lens Flare. I like using the 105 millimeter flare. Grab the crosshair and line the flare so it is fairly level from left to right across the frame and click OK. Now, that didn't come out very level, did it? So let's grab our Move tool, Transform, and we'll level the flare up. You don't have to do this, this is just my preference. OK, we'll commit that. Now we're going to get rid of the gray by changing the blend mode. You can use Overlay, Soft Light, but I'm going to use pin light. Pin light seems to add a little bit more vibrance to the flare as it moves across. And we're not going to keep it at 100% opacity. We'll reduce that later during the video editing process. Okay, now we have our basic layers created. We can convert it to a video timeline. There's two ways to do that. Go to the window option on the menu and choose timeline or 
At the bottom left, there's usually a tab called Timeline, and just click that. You'll be presented with a timeline pane. You should have a button that says Create Video Timeline. If yours says Create Frame Animation, simply hit the drop down, choose Create Video Timeline, and click the button. Immediately, you'll see all of your layers populated into the timeline pane. We want to build our bumper the same way we would build any other image in Photoshop, starting with the background. Our bumper is going to start with black and end with black, so we'll keep our background visible throughout the entire video. Our gradient layer is going to fade in a little later. So if you hold your mouse over the left edge of the gradient layer, it'll turn into a grab tool and we'll pull it to the right to about 10 seconds. I can get my mouse to move. Okay, the end is the same way. You can take the trim tool and pull it back. Okay, now for our text layers. Since we're going to start with a black background, fade into gradient, and then our text is going to come in. We'll pull the text a little bit farther over into the frame. At the end, our gradient is going to disappear first, then our text, so we'll trim it back, trim the text back to midway between the gradient and the black background. Our lens flare is the shortest part of the video, so we'll pull it in, say to here, and trim the end to somewhere around here. Okay, we have the basic rough cut, so let's add some effects. We're going to want the text and the gradient to fade in and fade out. So we'll choose our fade button, this little square with gray and dark gray. Change the default duration to apply to each effect to 0.55 seconds, that's my preference. And just drag that effect to the beginning of each layer that you want it to apply. And then drag it to the end. Now Photoshop is smart enough to realize that if you're dragging it to the end, you want to fade out. And if you're dragging it to the beginning, you want to fade in. You can also adjust it after you've dropped it by highlighting the effect and right clicking. Okay, now let's get started on the lens flare. Click the down arrow beside the lens flare layer and you'll see several options below it. We're going to work with opacity first. So let's highlight our lens flare layer, grab your playhead, pull it over to the beginning of that layer, come back to the layers panel in Photoshop and change the opacity to about 15%. Then click the little stopwatch beside the opacity option and Photoshop will drop a keyframe. That tells Photoshop where to start our effect. Grab your playhead and pull it about two thirds of the way through. Go back to your opacity bring it up to around 70%. And Photoshop will drop another keyframe there. Take the playhead, move it to the end, go back to your opacity, and drop it back down to 15%. And Photoshop drops a keyframe. We want the flare to move left to right across the screen during the video. So we're next we're going to work with the position keyframes. Make sure you have the lens flare layer selected and select your move tool. Grab the playhead, pull it back to the beginning of the lens flare layer and click the stopwatch beside the position effect. Photoshop will drop a keyframe to indicate that's where we want the effect to begin. Take the playhead and move it to the end of the layer. Now, 
grab your frame and simply pull it horizontally across the image. Make sure you stop and start in the same position vertically. Okay. Now we're done with the lens flare. Let's work on the second layer of text. Now this layer we want to fall out of the top layer and grow in opacity as it falls. So we'll select the photography layer, take our playhead, move it back to the beginning, change the opacity. I'm going to change it to around 15%, just like we did with the flare, and drop an opacity keyframe. Now I want my second layer of text to come to full opacity at the same time our lens flare comes to full opacity. So I'm going to move the playhead to align with that, change the opacity back to 100%, and Photoshop will drop a keyframe. Now let's get the movement. Take your text tool, pull the playhead back to the beginning, tell Photoshop we're going to start the effect here by clicking the stopwatch beside the transform keyframe. Drag your playhead to align with the two opacity keyframes. Select the layer of text and just drag it vertically down to where you want it to stop. Now click the commit button and you'll notice Photoshop did not drop a keyframe marker for us this time. So we'll have to do it manually by clicking the keyframe diamond. And there we go. Now we have an animated bumper with a lens flare effect. Now the playback will be a little rough the first time through as Photoshop renders the frames one at a time. But then your second playback should be really smooth. Now I'll play back through that one more time. There, a nice, somewhat professional animated bumper for your videos. That's it, we're done. I'd like to thank everyone for watching and I hope you learned something. Take what you've learned, make it your own, improve upon it. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And thank you. I'll see you next time.